Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Desi Perkins. If this is your first time here, it's good to meet you. Today, we're gonna to be doing a makeup tutorial on this beautiful, soft, neutral look. And you know what? I've picked up like a few new techniques, nothing major, but have made a major impact on my eye look. My eye shape and all my Instagram selfies have been popping because of these little techniques. People have been doing these techniques forever. It's nothing like life-changing. However, I haven't been doing these techniques and now I'm like, why haven't I? Because this is so much easier and it makes my eye shape look so much better. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Let's go ahead and get right into it. I've been rambling for a while and I'm speaking really, really fast, so let's go. I'm gonna start off with my brows. I'm using my Precisely My Brow Pencil in the shade number four. And what I am doing is just kind of taking this along the very top of my brow, lightly feathering all of my gaps here. And I'm holding it at the very tip of the pencil because I do not want really harsh strokes. I just want the lightest possible feathery application. Boom, boom, boom. So in the spots where I do want more pronounced strokes, I'm putting a little bit more pressure on the pencil. The reason I like lighter strokes is because I feel like when you start to push too hard, your product starts to look more waxy and like unnatural. So the lighter strokes, the better. And then lately, I've been doing a lighter brow, like not super filled in, and then I'll do my eyeshadow, and then afterwards, I'll go back and fill it in more if I need to, but I feel like, depending on my makeup look, I don't always need a super strong brow. You know, like if I want a more natural look, then I want a more natural brow. And then I'm just gonna dip into my number three. This is my foolproof brow powder that I did with Benefit in the rose gold edition and the brush as well. I'm gonna take the two shades and just go through, almost like setting what I just placed down so that your brow doesn't move around as much throughout the day. I'm just letting my hair air dry right now, so I don't know where we're gonna be in like 30 minutes. I don't know what's gonna, what's gonna go down here. It could just be all of a sudden like my hair's over here. It's very unpredictable. Every single time I start filming, I swear to you, that's when Katie and Shayla start texting the most. It's like they sense that I'm filming and they're like, let's have a group chat. Never fails. No respect for my filming time. All right, I felt pretty good about that. It's a nice, soft, not too angular, not too straight, just kind of like a mm, cute brow. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and prime our lids. I love to use this RCMA. This is letter C. I'm taking that on a flat concealer brush and we're gonna go ahead and just lay down the law here on our lids. I have been doing a ton of makeup looks in my everyday life because let me tell you the tea here. How can I put this? Okay, so when I'm filming my makeup, I don't get lost in my makeup. I'm focused on like camera, making sure I'm in focus, I'm in frame, and I'm like chit chatty. But when I do makeup just in my room by myself, I get lost in my makeup. Like I don't even think about it. Like I'm just doing whatever I feel. Like I see a color. And I think, oh, I'm gonna do that. And I, I feel like I put myself in a different mindset. And so I needed time recently to just play with makeup and do a bunch of looks on myself without filming just so I could kind of get back into the love of doing my makeup, if that makes sense. Cause you know, we all hit our little ruts and things like that. It was so great to do that because I feel like I've found new little techniques and tricks that just work really well with my eye shape that have made a huge impact in how I feel about my eye looks and just try different techniques for my skin work and it's been really, really great. And I really needed that. It does suck when you guys are like, oh my God, did you film this look? And I'm like, no, because I really will love the look. You just need to step away sometimes and do that for yourself so that when I come back, I'm like my best self here. Just something I thought I would share. I'm gonna go ahead and set that with my Laura Mercier Trans Whoa, Lucent Powder. I'm down to the nitty gritty here. I love when I get to the very empty of a product. Like I feel accomplished that I didn't lose it. And we have been on many trips together and here we are still together. It's a serious relationship with my powder. This is all the basics. You know, I kind of do this with every makeup look. If I don't use this, RCMA stuff on my lids. I'll use like a little bit of Tarte Shape Tape depending on my look. Like if I'm gonna go balls to the walls, like I want a really, really opaque base for a lot of color or like a crazy makeup look, I'll usually use 
the tart shape tape. But right now, I'm gonna go for, I'm thinking, a really pretty seductive eye look, but that's simple, but has a lot of impact on the way your eyeballs look, okay? This is like kind of a staple for me. I guess you could say this is like a lot of my usual steps. So I love taking Benefit's Hula Bronzer. It's just such a great shadow and bronzer. I love this powder for a good contour of the lid. I always start with this in my upper crease and the socket of my eye. It's just such a great shade for me for that. So I'm just applying that with a MAC 224. I feel like I, I literally do this with every makeup look because it's almost like contouring your face. You always contour. I mean, if you are a contour person, you always contour your cheekbones. Well, I always contour my eyes before I start with my shadows. It helps guide me. And then also, it also creates a really nice shadow in here so that when you do your nose contour, you could just whoop, connect it all. And then really diffuse it out here. I'm also gonna take the Hoola bronzer under my lash line, connecting that to the top. I'm using a Zoeva 234 brush. Since the last video, not much has changed. My brushes, my brushes are still unpredictably dirty. Like I just don't know what's going on over here in my brush belts. It's like a game of roulette every time I pick up a brush. Now I'm gonna take my Sigma Detailed Crease Brush. Do I wanna dip into this palette? I think I do. This isn't a palette, this is just like a palette that I have loose eyeshadows. I'm gonna go into NARS Tulum, which is this really pretty mustardy brown. And I'm going to put that in my crease. And I always start in the center and really round out this part of my socket. Love all these like warm, milk chocolatey, caramelly colors. Put it on the lid just right here in like a angular motion. So I sweep it like this, and then also sweep it out. And I don't worry too much anymore about this outer part. Like I just wanna make sure it's nice and diffused, but it doesn't have to be perfect as far as like if some shadow gets over here because then I just use a makeup wipe to clean it up. I'm gonna be taking my NARS Ginger Concealer. I'm taking this on a flat concealer brush and we are going to cut the crease, my friend. I'm gonna put my mirror here so I could just see what's going on. I like to do a soft cut crease. This isn't gonna be like, you know, but I still wanna clean up the lid. So I'm tilting my head back. Okay. Dogs are barking, cue the dogs. Looking good, looking good. And instead of taking it into my inner tear duct, like right here going down, I kind of take it more straight out into the nose bridge here. See that? Boom. And for some reason, it's easier for me to cut the crease when I pull a little taut here and try to do it in one swoop opposed to going like this, which is what I was doing before. I saw like an Instagram video of this girl doing a cut crease in one swoop. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that shit. And here we are. And it actually turns out that it's easier, but I just can't be doing it in my little mirror. I need a, a big mirror to see the overall, the look. All right, so now we have this really nice, nice, nice soft, cut crease. It's just so much easier to drag. Why did I never think of that? It's just game change for me. Like I've always done the concealer, but the way of applying it has changed the game for me, okay? And now the palette I wanted to use just mysteriously grew legs, got up and left me. Someone has taken the palette. So we're gonna go in a different direction. It's fine. Mother, this is it. I found it. This is the iconic palette. Look, it already has an eyelash stuck to it, so that means it's well loved. Truly iconic. But honestly, this palette is just has the right tones. I mean, I know when you look at it, it's like maybe it's not that exciting to you, but there's certain undertones in this shade and this in the nude shade that is so hard to find for some weird reason in other palettes. Like it's so perfect if you want to just put it all over the lid and not look like you're wearing so much shadow. Make sure that your concealer is not creased, it's all smoothed out. I'm gonna be dipping into In The Nude here, and we are going to pack that on the lid. Oh, such a good color. And we're gonna set all of that concealer. Gotta make sure I take it all the way up. We don't want any creasing. Right now I'm gonna dip back into Tulum, the NARS shade that we used, and I'm going to pat along the lid color that we put down just to kind of blend and diffuse everything out over here. 
Guys, so I went to the Lion King premiere the other day and it was such an amazing experience. First of all, I think we all have been slightly scarred by the Lion King. That movie as a child, now looking back, I'm like, damn, they really messed us up for the rest of our lives. Like, nobody will forget Mufasa dying, okay? Nobody. That is a thing to be scarred about. That really taught us about death, I feel like. But I went to the premiere and it was such a good time. I did the carpet. I hate doing red carpets. I hate it. I have so much anxiety. It's like the minute they start taking pictures and they're yelling, I'm like this. I get really stiff, uncomfortable. And then this red carpet to top it off, right I was, as I was at the very end of the red carpet, guess who gets onto the red carpet? Beyonce. She was floating along the carpet. I mean, Blue Ivy did better on the carpet than I did. All of the kids that did the carpet did better. Are you kidding me? What the heck? Everyone brought their kids. They are media trained, okay? They know how to do their poses. They were popping their foot, popping their hips. I was like, what? Is there a class I can take for this? Like, what's the deal here? I would like to know. I'm gonna take a little bit of this NARS shadow right here. It has a reddish foily tint. It's called Uwayaquil. It looks like key with a G and then NyQuil at the end. I'm gonna take that on an LCE5 pencil brush and we're gonna run that across and also pat it into the lash line because I want that warmth around my eyeballs because it's gonna help us later with like the smoky liner. And if you have lighter brown eyes, blue eyes, especially green eyes or hazel, this is gonna really make your eyes pop. Just adding this along the lash line, a little ruddy color. Anyways, Beyonce was on the carpet, killing it, slaying it. Blue Ivy, of course, killing it, slaying it. I didn't say hi to her because I am a pussy, but mostly because you know, there's certain times where people have the like, this is a time to say hi, and then there's certain times where it's like, this is not the time to say hi. You just, there's an energy, and it was so chaotic, and there were so many people trying to like go left and right at her, and like her security team was there, and I didn't want to get like taken down you know, if I went to go say hi, it just, it wasn't the moment. I could feel it. So maybe next time I meet Beyonce, I will try to say hi to her. Next time, mark my words. This is my favorite eyeliner right now. This is from Linda Hallberg and girl, mm, I don't know what you did to this liner, but it is the best formula. It's so creamy without being all transfery. Um, it's the blackest liner. It's so easy to work with, especially doing a wing. This is a technique I've been doing lately, which isn't like revolutionary or anything, but it's really changed my eye shape. And it'll do this for anyone, especially if you have rounder eyes, this is a great technique to do. I'm gonna create a straight line from the inner corner of my eye all the way across and just follow the lash line out slightly over here. I have to look in a mirror, so I have to get very close. I'm gonna hold the pencil this way so that the very point lines up with my tear duct here. And then we are gonna take this all the way across, straight. If you want that snatched eyeball, this is what you gotta do. And then flick it upwards slightly. And it's okay if it's messy because we're gonna blend it out. So I'm gonna take a angled brush. This is a Sigma small angle. And I'm gonna start with the inner corner, start running that along the edges. And also, if we have to take this out to more of a point, we take it out to more of a point. I'm gonna clean that up with the makeup wipe too, so don't worry. And then at the end, also pulling this liner up and out. I didn't take it all the way to the end. You see how there's a gap there? Cause I want my eye to look even more lifted. It's okay if you go and cover like a lot of that maroon we put down. I mean, try not to, but sometimes I do. It's fine. I could just blend it all out with a little bit more. Just keep kind of going back and forth until I'm happy with the way it looks. You could do this thinner, thicker, but it, it, the technique is really like looking down and trying to go as straight across from this inner corner to this as you can. Um, because I feel like I used to try to do the inner corner cat eye thing and I would do the cat eye after the liner, but it would, it would like be off as far as direction or the way my eye shape would be. So just follow exactly a straight line across. It gives you like a very lioness shape. 
and right now my liner is a little thicker but if you just want the shape and you don't want to have a crazy wing you could definitely do the same technique and just keep it close to the lash line taking a makeup wipe now and clearly like the inner corner is looking crazy but first we're gonna take care of some fallout here clean up that inner corner so that the the little chingadera the line that goes in the inner corner is nice and small just very subtle and now we're gonna apply some lashes i'm using my house of lashes iconics I love these because honestly, to me, they're like a perfect in between. Not a crazy, crazy lash, not a natural lash. They're nice and wispy. And I'm just gonna press them together with my natural lashes. And then I always love to give this outer corner just a little, a little lift here, if you will, to go with that cat eye shape. Right, going back into the NARS Tulum shade, and I'm going to define my lower lash line a little more over here. Really get into that inner corner as well to meet up with that line we created, cat eye shape. Once concealer comes on, I feel like everything will look a lot better. I'm thinking I want to add a little sparkle. I don't know, should I keep it matte or add a little sparkle? I feel like it looks really pretty matte. Do you think it could take it in the wrong direction and there's any room? What direction would it take it in, Steven? Like a hoe? Are you trying to say I'm gonna be a hoe if I, I add glitter? Know. Just tell me you don't want me to be hoey and add glitter. Just say it. All right, okay. All right, I'm gonna take Whiskey from Urban Decay and add that to my waterline here. Really make that sexy. Eyeliner, waterline face. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna blend that out. Just make it look nice and Smokey. Let's go in and add some concealer, shall we? I'm gonna take Smashbox Medium Warm Golden. It has, you know, that warm tone that I'm looking for here. I'm just gonna add it to the inner corners of my eyes. And blend that out. Now we're gonna conceal with the little jar, jars, ginger, NARS ginger here. Once the concealer comes on, it's like I feel like I come to life. Everything looks cleaner. I'm like, should I wear foundation today? That's the question. I feel like I have not been wearing foundation. I'm like Jay Kissa these days. When I say no foundation, I mean, I have a shit ton of concealer and I use the RCMA foundation in a darker shade to contour. So it does have a little coverage around the perimeters of my face. And then I put the concealer in the center. So I wouldn't say no foundation really. I just say no like, base and then bringing back all the dimension with contour and everything like i'm just applying the product down in a way where we're not flattening our features and then trying to bring dimension back I'm just working with the dimension that i have and applying the colors accordingly it's been so hot you know like 100 degrees here and i hate feeling like i have so much foundation on cakey so i'm just kind of trying to conceal only where i need to and then everywhere else making sure there's just the lightest layer of color. I'm just getting ready here. So this is also my dilemma. Look at my shoulder compared to my face. I keep my face out of the sun, but my body obviously is in the sun and I get dark. Like it's not even showing how tan I am because of all the lights. Like I'm pretty tan. So when I don't wear foundation, this pose becomes a problem for me. But can you imagine if I put this shade on my face? So the no foundation thing, when you keep your face out of the sun, it's like a little tricky. I'm gonna pick up some Tarte Shape Tape and I love to use this to highlight the center of my nose because for some reason this will dry down and like leave that perfectly contoured nose concealer that I need. I can let it sit there for a second and it keeps that straight brightness. And then also drag it into the forehead like a little tree. And then here on the chin. Okay, I'm actually gonna put a little bit more coverage since I'm not gonna do the foundation bit. Basically, I blend out all of this before I ever blend out the nose to give it some time to set. I'm gonna go into my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Powder and just lightly set my under eyes while I do the rest of my skin work here. So as we get too creasy under there. Next, I'm going into my RCMA. This is the Dark Shinto palette here. It has all these nice tan shades something closer to what I got going on over here. Not even, I'm so like, ah! caught it. Good, we're good. Just gonna 
go into the darkest shades here and apply this to the perimeters of my face. Add a little color to this. This These colors have a lot of warm undertone, which when I am in the sun, I feel like that's what my body starts to give off. This is a 620 Koki brush, K-O-K-I-E. You can see I'm slowly coming to life here. Slowly but surely. a nice light finish here nothing too full coverage I'm gonna throw it back to an old favorite eyeshadow Mac brown script it's like the ready brown I'm going to apply that to my lower lash line because I feel like my crease is very warm and diffused and I just want my lower lash line to look like that as well and I always squint when I do this so that it looks like I'm smizing and then just blending that out now we can go ahead and set the under eye with some Laura Mercier translucent powder Down the center of the nose, chin. I'm gonna set the um, the warm cream foundation that we put on the perimeter of our face with a little bit of bronzer. Oh, I'm gonna use Caramel by Hulu. By Hulu. I'm gonna, <laughs> Caramel by Benefit, okay? I think, you know, what's happening is that gardening is just on my mind. I don't know if you guys have seen my crops lately, but it's thriving back there. And I'm such a senora outside every day, like enjoying my crops and making Perkins produce, yeah. gift baskets for everybody. And I'm just like loving it. Like it's such a rewarding thing. I know I talk about it all the time, but honestly it's, it's so great to have your own garden and plant your own food. And I made pico out of all of my crops yesterday. Okay, I feel like I'm a little bit more tan now. Kind of had to go ham on the bronzer and everything. Okay. And then for my nose contour, I always use MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation because I just love the way it looks on the nose. I use NC45 and I just use it on a blending brush. For this, I'm gonna use a MAC 217. And again, I connect the bronzer that we put in the crease when we first started down the nose. And then take it around underneath and back up. I love using this because it does have nice coverage, so since we're not putting a lot of coverage on our face, it gets right in those areas around the nose that I would typically like to cover, especially because I have hyperpigmentation right here. Good, good for me. And then I always take Hulu and refine the very tip of the nose. That really pinches it all together. And if you add a little too much bronzer, like I feel like I may have just done, just go back in with your beauty blender. And you know, give it a little tap, 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 tap. I'm gonna be using a new highlight today. This is Jouer Molten Gold. Very pretty. First, I'm gonna apply a little to my nose, down the fridge. And then I'll do the rest of it after I take off this powder. Let me take off this powder real quick. I think half my brow came off over here. I think I wiped, must have uh, gone a little hard on my bronzer on that side. So now we're gonna apply some blush. I'm using Makeup Forever B308. And I'm just gonna use the same It Cosmetics brush that I used for my bronzer. I'm gonna apply my blush in like a little bit more of a flush, fresh look. So a little bit along the bridge, more so up here, just like if the sun were to hit us. Just love that for summer. I'm putting on a lot of blush because honestly, blush fades fast and I wanna look really flushed all day. And then we're gonna spray a little Fix Plus everywhere. Smells so good. Going back into my brow products, I'm gonna take the um, pencil brush, or precisely my brow, and I'm also gonna take the powder, and I'm gonna dip the pencil into the powder, the darker shade of my number three full proof. And I'm gonna go over and kind of create like a little bit of a freckly, some beauty mark vibes around my face. It's just gonna tie in the skin looking a little bit more natural that you could see things through. And then also I'm having like some dark spots and breakouts on my chin that didn't really get quite fully covered, which is fine, but I'm gonna make little beauty marks out of them. So this little dark spot here is now a beauty mark, okay? You have another one right here another freckle now. 
Okay, let me finish off with a highlight and our lip color. So like I said, we're going with the Jouer um, Molten Gold, and I'm taking a Morphe R36 brush, just adding a little pop. And whatever's left, I always love to run it along my forehead temples to add a like nice glow. I know I added so much blush, but for some reason I'm like, give me more. It's like, I just wanna look like I've been in the sun. What lip color do you guys think we should do? Something peachy. This might be fun. Like, I feel like I don't ever do colors like this. It's summer, so why not, right? Like, what do you guys think about this color? This is kind of pretty, huh? Okay, we're gonna go with this. This is the Kylie, this is from her new collection, Paradise Please. Do I have a lip liner here for that? I think I do. Fruit Cocktail by MAC. So I really like this formula because it is a little bit more matte and not as slippery as your normal traditional lipstick. Like the reason I don't love bright colors with regular lipstick is because I feel like it could be a little bit slippery and then you're gonna get it all over your face throughout the day if your hair flies there, whatever. But this, this is a little bit more dry in the best way. Feels like a liquid matte. Okay, okay. I knew you guys were gonna say, oh, she's gonna do a nude lip. And honestly, I probably was, not gonna lie. I feel like the matte look is like kind of popping right now. So I'm not gonna add an inner corner. I just think the crease is so soft, so pretty. Okay, we're good. This is the final makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Picked up some new tips and tricks here and there. Like I said, that inner corner liner situation, mm, it has changed the game. And also the dragging of the cut crease instead of like placing it Wow, I know that doesn't seem like a huge deal and maybe some people have been doing it for a while, but that is new to me and I'm telling you my crease has never looked cleaner, softer, smoother. Also bringing it and making the inner corner a little bit wider is a nice look for this um, eye look. So I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup tutorial. I'm done rambling. I'm gonna go do something with my hair, see what happens and uh, probably go run some errands. Okay, I got a lot of stuff to do today. Maybe I'll just be in the garden like with a full beat. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Steven's been acting wild lately, you guys. We gotta control him. How so? You've been wilding out on me. I need receipts. Need restraints is what you need. <laughs> receipts, my ass. Oh, righty then. I'm taking that on a flat foundation or flat. What's going on with my brain? It's almost like he likes la chancla. Le gusta la chancla. You know you're trying to come up against me or what? Cause I'll fight you. Snatcher. All right, so that's it. You know what? I give up. I'm done. I'm done.